Good afternoon. My name is Sarah Beth Dunn, and I will be discussing the topic of vector-borne diseases in developing countries. Today, over half of the world's population is at risk of contracting a vector-borne disease, and more than one million people die each year because of them. However, the biggest problem facing these illnesses is not a lack of resources. Instead, it's a lack of interest. But before I get ahead of myself, there are probably some of you wondering what exactly a vector is. Well, according to the World Health Organization, also known as WHO, a vector is an organism that can transmit disease between humans and animals. The most common vectors are mosquitoes and ticks, though sand flies, fleas, flies, and tritoline bugs also have the ability. In the case of developing countries, the most problematic vector is the mosquito, primarily because of its mobility and adaptability. Worldwide, there are over 3,500 species of mosquitoes and they are found in almost every ecosystem on the planet. Fortunately for us, only a few hundred of these species bite humans. A common misconception about vectors is that they use blood as food, but the reality is that the majority of them actually use the protein found in blood to create their eggs. Ticks and tritamine bugs are the only vectors that directly consume blood. In recent years, rising global temperatures have perpetuated the problem of vector-borne diseases. Warmer temperatures means longer growing seasons for plants, which in turn leads to longer breeding seasons for vectors. Ultimately, as the plants that some of these vectors feed on expand their environments, vectors expand theirs as well. Another aspect of rising temperatures is the increased amount of annual rainfall associated with it. Water sources are important for these organisms, not only as a source of nourishment, but as a nursery for young larvae. Because of the short time it takes for mosquito eggs to hatch, an ideal nursery could be something as minute as a footprint filled with rainwater. Obviously, this is problematic for countries where sanitation practices are inadequate. While the number of vector-related illnesses within the United States has been limited, the threat of infection is particularly strong for those who travel internationally. In a survey that I conducted at Freedom High School, I found that over 70% of those surveyed had traveled outside of the country, and yet less than 13% of those same participants knew what a vector-borne disease was. Obviously, they were unaware of the risk they incurred as they traveled. The danger, however, may not just be for those who travel internationally. Just last week, Northampton County received $49,000 that is to be used to control outbreaks of Zika and West Nile. Now don't worry, last year there were only 16 reported cases of West Nile and none of Zika, and every person afflicted lived. You'll be fine, you just might wanna put on some bug spray. Those in developing countries, however, do not have this luxury. In these areas, there are three main barriers that exist, medical, economic, and cultural. Medically, there is very little that can be done for patients who contract a vector-borne disease. The only disease that is treatable is malaria, and that is because it is parasitic in nature as opposed to viral. In a phone interview I conducted with Dr. and Mrs. Babaka Ramanesh, two medical professionals who traveled to Haiti and Central African Republic, it was stated that more patients actually die from malnutrition and dehydration than the illnesses themselves. But despite what little can be done, the cost of treatment remains particularly high. A typical case of dengue costs between 500 and 1500 US dollars, which is a lot of money that neither the people nor their governments have. The majority of those afflicted live as farmers and more time outside equates to greater risk of infection. And because so many people are getting sick, there's very little cultural concern about these illnesses. In fact, malaria is often viewed as we would view the cold or flu in the United States. This is compounded by the fact that, like the cold and flu, vector-borne diseases are typically not deadly. It is only when they are coupled with a lack of clean water and proper sanitation that they become lethal. And so, the solution. The solution has two main parts. The first being educating the public about vectors and the diseases they carry. Perhaps the most inexpensive way to combat these illnesses, the main focus is teaching the population how to recognize symptoms of the disease, how to avoid contracting it, and how and when to seek medical attention. It isn't until afterwards that resources such as mosquito nets, which are mesh nets that cover people at night, and bug spray should be distributed, as these materials are only as useful as knowledge allows them to be. Another part of this education is teaching the population proper techniques for water collection and storage. According to WHO, water should be kept in a container with a tight lid or mesh cap. One area where this prevention through education technique has been implemented is Patalim Jaya, a large city in Malaysia, where officials have been successful in reducing the number of illnesses related to vector-borne diseases. 
The most important education, however, is how to put this knowledge into practice. The second portion of the solution is improving the quality of water available, primarily through point of use treatment. This typically consists of tablets that are added to drinking water right before consumption, killing any microorganisms that are present. This method is particularly effective because it also limits the opportunities for contamination. The problem with point of use treatments is that they are single use treatments and cannot purify large amounts of water. Consequently, there would need to be a way to distribute this treatment to families on a regular basis. However, this option is more practical than a single centralized water source, as families would have to walk miles a day to access it. Though it may not be seen until many years into the future, improved water quality in developing countries will allow money that would otherwise have been spent on caring for the afflicted to be spent on other endeavors, such as developing infrastructure. In addition, it would decrease the prevalence of waterborne illnesses, another serious problem these countries face. Now, there are probably some of you thinking, why don't we just kill all the mosquitoes? Theoretically, this is a viable option, but practically it would not be plausible. Eradicating mosquitoes would have a vast, potentially harmful environmental impact, as mosquitoes comprise a vital part of many ecosystems. Adult mosquitoes are food for many birds and the larva for many aquatic species. It is possible that the organisms that feed on mosquitoes would find another species to prey on, but this would be difficult in areas where extreme conditions limit the number of species that can survive. And even if eradicating mosquitoes was possible, it would only get rid of one type of vector. And so, I hope it is obvious that the next step in combating vector-borne illnesses is educating the public and helping them put the knowledge into practice. If people in these countries could be educated and be given access to clean water, the results would be immediately beneficial, both economically and medically. But until there is a collective will to combat vector-borne diseases, those living in developing countries will continue to be subject to them. As a country, this is an issue we can no longer avoid. Thank you.